Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School on this very, very exciting day in which we live into the real and living presence of resurrection. And we're so blessed today to be also celebrating a little bit later First Communions for ten of our, five of our students and five next week. And so we'll be gathering outdoors in person uh, this morning safely. But this represents our streaming service in which we will enjoy a very special message from our vicar, our seminarian, Daphne Del Risco Noya, and also uh, some wonderful readings and prayers and music to lift our spirits, to calm our hearts, and to ground us in the reality of our faith, the resurrection. Our mission here at Pilgrim is to gather, prepare, and send all as leaders for God's mission in the world. And we are a welcoming and affirming and including and activating community. And so thank you everyone for worshiping with us. Please like this uh, worship experience and even consider sharing it. Uh, whether you found us on YouTube or Facebook, we're so glad you are worshiping with us this morning. And may the Holy Spirit from this point on together with our budding worship media team, uh, take over at this point so we can just uh, be in God's presence and experience the joy that only God can give us. Because even in the midst of the struggle for justice, there is joy. There is joy in the presence of the Lord, even in the struggle. So with that, let's take a deep breath. Amen. And let us begin with the invocation. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. Let's move aside a little bit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, we give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new. Yes. Leading us all from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, and like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when, when we, we hide, hide in fear. fear. Clothe us with your, your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. We pray this by the power of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
prayer of the day. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray, holy and righteous God. You are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, welcome to the children's message. And today we have a story about Easter because this is the Easter season in our church. On the first Easter Sunday, Jesus' friends were not very excited. Mm. Most of them were sad. They loved Jesus, but he had died on the cross two days ago, and they were scared. Maybe the people who killed Jesus would come and hurt them too. In addition, they were confused. Some of women found Jesus' tomb was empty. And then Peter said he actually saw Jesus alive. And two of Jesus' friends who had gone back to their town came running back saying they saw Jesus alive too. That was confusing. It was exciting too, if it was true. But how could Jesus be alive? They had all seen him die on the cross. They knew where he had been buried. That evening, Easter evening, some disciples of Jesus were talking when suddenly Jesus appears. And Jesus talked with them about how God's prophets in the Bible, what we call the Old Testament, had said the Messiah would come and that he would suffer and that he would die and that he would rise again and that his friends would bring the whole world the news that death was overcome. So my friend Jesus appears to the disciples because he wants that they feel better. He wants they understand it is not time to cry or be sad or be worried. No, it is time to become witnesses of resurrection. Do you know what it means to be witnesses? It is to tell others about Jesus. It is all about to share with others that in Jesus we find peace, hope, and salvation. So today, the good news is that Jesus is active. He is present among us because he wants to accompany us. He wants that we understand his purpose in our lives. That is to bring us peace and invite us to talk about him to all our friends. Today, Jesus invites us to go and say to everyone, he's alive, he's here for us. Jesus is very present in our lives to share with us the good news of salvation. Amen. The first lesson is from the first epistle of John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. 
sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke chapter 24. Lord, Lord, Lord to you, O Lord. Lord. While they were still talking about Jesus, Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doves arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, hmm. and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Hmm. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. season when we don't focus in Jesus' ministry and teachings, 
But those events that happen among Jesus' followers, those experiences that they lived after Jesus' death. In Easter, we also pay attention to the way that Jesus is present and active in the life of the community in order to help everyone to understand resurrection and become real witnesses for the world. In the gospel today, we find the community of disciples gathered in Jerusalem trying to understand what happened to Jesus. This is a new stage in their lives as disciples and human beings. A new world is opening in front of them. An important part of the history of salvation, resurrection, is there waiting for them to live as Christ believers. When we read the text, we feel that this is a dark and hopeless stage for Jesus' followers. Before Jesus' death, they were listening, learning, and accompanying Jesus, but now they lost their way. Now it is possible that many of them were planning to return to the daily activities they did before decided to follow Jesus. While many others might think that all that they can do is gathering to pray, listen, and support each other in the face of an uncertain future. For the disciples, and the community of Jesus' followers, this is a real difficult transition between, between what it, it was and what could be for them from now. For the life of the world, this is a new beginning that Jesus' disciples are not able to understand yet. In this context, Jesus presents himself in their midst to dispel their fears and frustrations and to give them strength and hope. However, Jesus' presence only makes his followers remain confused. That is why they believe they see a spirit in verse 36. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. For them, the risen Jesus is someone living just in their imagination. It's like a fantasy, something unreal. For them, a dead person appearing to the living only can create fear and confusion. At this point, it's good to emphasize that Luke is a gospel closely linked to Israel's story and God's relationship with humankind and the world. At the same time, the relationship between Luke and the book of Acts allows to connect the gospel to the origins of the Christian movement, placing Jesus' ministry and death and the development of the early Christian church in the eyes of the readers, us as an ongoing process in the history of salvation. Luke's narrative anticipates a church in continuity with Israel's story of relationship with God, a God of promises and covenants for salvation of Israel and all nations. Luke's narrative wants to anticipate a church that represents the fulfillment of God's purpose of salvation for the whole world. The continuity among Israel's story, Jesus' ministry and death in Luke, and the development of the early Christian church in the book of Acts ratifies the fulfillment of God's promises to all nations from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Now, maybe you are asking, why this emphasis of Luke on Israel's story? 
Why is this emphasis so important for disciples to understand the scriptures? And the most important question, what does all this have to do with resurrection? Well, first, Jesus says in verse 43, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Here, Jesus is reminding there is a promise and also there is a covenant between God and humankind from the very beginning of the history of salvation. And this reminder was key to open the eyes of the disciples because allow them to see and understand the rise Jesus was in front of them. Verse 43 ends saying, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. And second, according to some biblical scholars, Luke is a gospel embedded in Israel's relationships with surrounding cultures. If you pay attention to chapter four through chapter 21 of Luke, you can realize how Jesus is proclaiming the extension of God's commonwealth to all nations. One of Luke's concerns is to demonstrate how God's faithful fulfillment of biblical promises to Israel to Israel will give birth to an inclusive church for both Jews and Gentiles. And not only that, for Luke, the church has also to emerge as a pluralistic community, not only of Jews and Gentiles, but also Romans and non-Romans as the common people of God. Then, at the end of chapter 24, verses 46 and 47, what we have is the resurrected Jesus, proclaiming the extension of God's commonwealth to all nations, saying, the Messiah will rise from the dead and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all all nations beginning at Jerusalem. The Messiah will rise from the dead and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to Jews, Gentiles, Romans, and non-Romans. The Messiah will rise from the dead and repentance for the forgiveness of sins, repentance for salvation will be preached in his name to all people in North and South America, in Europe, in Asia, in the Caribbean, and all nations. And you will be witnesses of all these things. As I mentioned it at the beginning, in Easter, we pay attention to the way that Jesus is present and active in the life of our community, our church, in the life of the world, in order to help everyone to understand resurrection and become real witnesses of it. Today, the risen Lord invites us to embrace resurrection as a new life in all levels of our existence. Today, the risen Lord invites us to share his promises and follow and respect the covenant he made with humankind from the very beginning of the history of salvation. Today, the risen Lord invites us to lead our church to take a firm and real step to proclaim God's commonwealth in our current and critical circumstances. Today, the risen Lord invites us to build a more inclusive church where everyone feels welcome. 
Today, the risen Lord invites us to work in God's commonwealth so everyone can know Jesus and receive him in their lives for salvation. Today, the risen Lord invites us to be, to be witnesses of his active presence in our midst, a presence that is forever for all nations yeah. from the beginning of the world and the, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. 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 That's an inspiring world for the church and for all of us. Now let us sing together the hymn of the day. confess our faith in the resurrecting God who is present and among us and strengthening us through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he is seated into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We were missing a few slides there. Sorry about that. All right. So we are trying to show a video. 
at this time of the hydroponics garden, so we'll have that up. Very Good evening, soon. everyone. My name is Scott Russell, and I want to welcome, welcome you to the Pilgrim Hydroponics Garden, aka Hydroponics. Many of you may remember the Pilgrim Hydroponics Garden starting out as a single shelf, growing about 20 plants about five years ago in 2016. We invited the uh, Hot Meals guests to attend to some of those plants on the weekends, and those plants provided food, and, aka salad, to uh, the Hot Meals program about every five weeks or so. Through the last five, year, five years of trial and error, we've managed to expand to this room, which has the ability to grow over 200 plants at this point. And much of that uh, is due to the help of the people who uh, have given an enormous amount of effort towards this project. Those people include, include Beth Berry, Carla Berry, myself, Scott Russell, uh, Michael Marinelli, B. Marinelli, my father, Howard Russell, Chris Knight, and a Hot Meals guest, Philomena, who's come in and cleaned whenever we've had the opportunity to based on COVID. So welcome to the room. As you can see, it's a fairly wide open, well-lit area. We have a workstation right down here where people, every two weeks or so, will uh, create, seed, create seedlings, plant various seeds, using lettuces, beet greens, or hand tomatoes and peppers in the near future. We also have a board here which contains information on what we can plant, what grows well, how much, uh, how many seeds to use, things along those lines. Moving over here, we have a first growing station. We call it the gray shelf, because it's a gray shelf. Uh, we have several uh, PVC uh, types in here, which we grow plants in, along with flood trays. When this is fully active, we uh, can grow close to 53 plants in this, uh, in, in this shelf alone. All right, so this is our second growing area. We call it the green wall. We can grow 24 plants total in these uh, PVC pipes. And our hope is, and we've seen this before, is that when the plants are fully grown and fully mature, that they're so big and so tall and you can't see the wall, the plants themselves can come the wall. Over here, we have our third growing area. These are trees. These were made in a lab at Argonne National Lab by an engineer who donated his time. The lab was like a bat cave, and this idea that it was five stories on the ground under a nuclear reactor. But uh, the trees were donated by said engineer, and the paint job was done by Michael Marino. Uh, the trees here can, uh, can grow nearly 180 plants. We grow basil, arugula, bok choy in them. They are on and off throughout the day, producing a rain-like sound. We also have a water tank underneath. Now, most people think that we can just add water and the plants will grow normally, just put any kind of lights up. But there's a decent amount of science that goes behind this. If you don't understand what nutrients go inside the water, as you're doing this, the water plants will not grow. All right, so this has been the Pilgrim Hydroponics Garden, Pilgrim Hydroponics. Uh, we have, this has been a journey. We uh, have been working on this to continue to improve this. It is something that changes monthly, and our current goals right now are to provide food for the Hot Meals program, which feeds about 50 people every week. And uh, we have future goals, which will include uh, finding ways to cool this room off, better temperature control. Uh, we want to think of ways to uh, bring this garden to full capacity so we can provide food not only for the Hot Meals program, but for other places as well. And you're, of course, welcome to uh, come by, contact me, contact the church, and they will give you our information, anything along with, anything like that. Uh, Otherwise, I thank you for listening to this video, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you so much, Scott. That was a lot of work to put that video together, but of course it's been a lot of work to be able to grow fresh food for our Hot Meals ministry, and we'd love to expand this ministry. The Hydroponics Garden, which was inspired originally by the Farming Hope Project in El Salvador, was... Um, really inspiring in the beginning and now to see it established it's even more inspiring if you think you know pilgrim you may not know everything going on at pilgrim it's amazing that in addition to the worship community the school the hot meals we have this burgeoning ministry that could really make a larger impact if we have uh, more people that can participate and give to it 
but that's why we're now lifting up the offering because we have something we are growing here at Pilgrim and that is a gathering, preparing and sending community that's providing fresh food for hungry people and as we participate in this ministry, we ourselves are inspired and blessed. And so we invite you to give online at our giving page. You can also find this link through our Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School website. If you just put that into Google, a couple clicks later, you'll find our online giving. Uh, you can also give by check or through our app uh, on Banco. So at this time, uh, we invite you to pray with us, thanking God for our hydroponics garden and for all the people God is blessing us to connect with and to feed and to celebrate life and spring in this growing season. Let us pray. God of love, you call, you call us, us beloved, beloved children and welcome us to your table. table. Receive our lives to the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let us pray together. Everyone take a deep breath. Alive in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Creating God as a master, Artists, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Empower us to do the work of, the re of restoration where it is needed, especially in lakes and rivers. Guide us in providing all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are filled with question and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter scripture so that the church embodies the, rep the repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, yes, O oh God. God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering, your compassion, and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Blake, Joanna, Susan, Sue, Glenn, Cindy, Bob, Evelyn, Carlota, Gail, Mary, Tommy, and all those caring for the sick. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, great. is great. We also pray at this time for Cindy Heinegger as she recovers uh, from an injury. We pray that your healing presence be upon her. Uh, we pray for this city as it reels from the tragic death of Adam Toledo. And we pray for the gatherings that are happening and the response that all of us have to this violence and to pursue peace and accountability, justice, and personal responsibility. Lord, we also pray for the tragic gun violence that led to the deaths of eight people in Indianapolis. And particularly, we pray for the Asian community and particularly for the Sikh community that you protect them from needless persecution and that we see in your diverse image the beauty of your diverse human community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us and we pray for those who mourn, especially the Stewart family on the passing of Caleb, the Grievousen family on the passing of Rolf and Christopher. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and knowing that your God 
You, O oh God, are, is bigger and stronger and will outlast every problem and every struggle. We thank you for the power of resurrection. That's good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Thank you, everyone, for worshiping with us. And it's been a very busy weekend. Yesterday, we celebrated the baptism of Jack and Dominic Chiappi. Uh, and so we're excited to have uh, two new young men uh, to grow with us in the body of Christ. Next slide. Thank you for everyone who came out to Trivia Night. Uh, it was probably about 150 people that yes. participated online and raised a bunch of money for our seventh graders trip to Washington, D.C. So um, should, I, should I brag or not? We, we got third place, our team. So um, <laughs> I'm kind of proud of that. But we had a lot of help. Thanks to um, Brand. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, we are continuing in worship streaming next week at 8 a.m. on and also in-person worship as we celebrate five more First Communions next week. But that's a sign-up genius for that link. Also, our anti-racism anti study and discussion group starts this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. And so there's also a sign up genius to make sure you get the link for that. But we want to grow, especially as we approach the anniversary of the death of George Floyd. We want to make sure that this Kairos moment, this moment in church and American history that is meant to get our attention, that we pay attention to God's word and what we can do uh, to dismantle racism. Next slide. Also, uh, now that the trivia night is over, we are turning our full attention to a really fun and important event. We do one really big fundraiser each year, and that's Party for Pilgrim. And uh, we depend on not only the community coming together, uh, which includes, of course, our school families, our church households, and our school alumni, uh, so that we can continue uh, in this strong and vibrant and creative ministry. So save the dates of May 21st and 22nd. Next slide. And next week during Explore the Bible, well, you can join us in a few minutes for Explore the Bible when we talk about the benefits of a sabbatical program for congregations. But also, uh, we have a live interview on the April 25th with Reverend Dr. Knutson all the way in South Africa. We had a live interview. Uh, we're going to do a live interview over Zoom led by the Sun Times and Pilgrim's own Stephanie Zimmerman. So blessed to have talent like that within and beyond the congregation. So thank you. With that, let's take a deep breath and sing our sending hymn. We need a drummer in place. Yes. This is an African hymn. I know it's not easy singing at home, but we do ask that you sing with us. Uh, it's a really beautiful, joyful hymn that comes up from, to us from the people of Tanzania, East Africa. Yay.
Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Just like Jesus couldn't stay locked in that tomb, but came alive and shared his very presence, his very food, his very self with us. That releases something within us, even if we've had a hard week, a tough week, a sad week. There's something within us we can't hold back. We can't hold inside. But we erupt in joy. We erupt in peace. We let the love of Christ flow through us and cleanse us and renew us. And so that's why we gather right now as Jesus rose physically from the dead so his disciples had someone that they could touch and see and experience right now. Right Amen. now. Amen. We have something that maybe comes in a small form, but is huge for our souls and for our spirit to know that God is real and that God is with us. And so we remember. Please take hold of anything you have at home to remind you that Christ is truly with you. Even if it's not bread and wine, take hold of something to remember that Christ is with you physically. Let us remember that in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ given for for you, the body of Christ given for you. Jesus loves you and nothing can change that. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and poured it out for all to drink, saying, take and drink this cup as the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. The Jesus of loves you. you. He is the strength of your life today. Thank and you, forever. community. And now let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus teaches us, each in our own way and language. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done. done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.